Hi, I'm Graham Trudeau and I wanted to make a quick video today about something I'd like to see more people doing. Using electrical components with their micro breadboard teeny tiny, I'll, I'll just call it micro format gear. I'll be using the Castle 1.5 for this video, but you can use the same idea with the Bitranger, the Workstat, and so on. Quick disclaimer though, don't do this stuff with capacitors or any components that can significantly increase amperage or voltage. It could damage your equipment. Now, moving on to the fun stuff. Resistors are the easiest component to do this with. No soldering required, you can just shove a photoresistor in your castle and instantly have live playback or live modification of your routing. Or you can use a normal resistor to act as a floating attenuator, a fixed drop between your modulator and your destination. Next up, one of the funnest and easiest components to use is the tilt switch. You can buy a 10 pack for a dollar on eBay and they're super simple. When the switch is upright, a small metal ball connects the two leads together, turning the switch on. When you tilt the switch, the ball falls off the leads, turning the switch off. If you chop a breadboard cable in half and attach it to each lead, that makes hooking it up to your microformat gear a little easier. And by attaching a few to your castle, you've given it a rudimentary accelerometer support for about a dollar. Toggle switches can also be a lot of fun. By connecting the first and third lead to modulation sources, you can send the middle lead to a destination, which lets you switch between modulation sources on the fly. This is particularly useful for rhythmic playing. Now, it's worth mentioning that you don't have to chop up breadboard cables to connect components to your gear. Solid core and stranded wires both work for connecting things and each have some pros and cons. Solid core wire is easier to use and its stiffness allows you to do things like set your tilt switches to specific positions. But that same stiffness can also make patch bay crowding a real problem. Stranded wire requires the additional step of tinning one end of the wire, that's applying solder to it, and that lets you more comfortably insert it into the little patch points. But the increased flexibility makes patch bay crowding much less of an issue. It's definitely my preferred type of wiring for things like toggle switches. And that's the end of the video. Feel free to suggest new video topics in the comments, like, subscribe, and thank you for watching.